Gotcha. And it is difficult to make biohazard training engaging unless you're a biology major. But this is important, especially for FPO, but especially for our custodial staff. So just bear with me. Let's see here. Let's start out with some definitions. Uh, the definition of a biological agent. Biological agents are living things or substances produced by living things that can cause disease in humans. And if I were you, I'd look at my test right now. <laughs> <laughs> biological hazard or a biohazard is taken to mean any viable infectious agent that presents a risk or a potential risk to the well-being of humans. Um, the routes of entry, and we'll do it in order of commonality, inhalation, ingestion, and then absorption through the skin. If I were you, I'd look at my quiz right now. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about transmission. How is it transmitted? There are two ways, direct and indirect. Direct transmission takes place when there's a physical contact between an infected and a non-infected person. <coughs> and then indirect transmission, it takes place when infectious agents attach themselves to materials or objects, or also when an insect or the air transmits the infection. So we're gonna, these are examples of biohazards. We're gonna um, talk about each one. And if I were you, I'd look at my quiz right now. We're gonna go into HIV AIDS. HIV is the human immunodeficiency virus, and then AIDS stands for the acquired immune deficiency syndrome. It's transmitted from an infected person by, excuse me, bodily fluids. Let's go back up. By bodily fluids such as blood, urine, semen, or other blood containing sec secretions. There is no cure, and the end result is death. HIV is thought to be the cause of AIDS. And um, this gets kind of technical, but it, 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 the virus invades the helper T cells and it weakens the immune system. Leaves, it leaves the infected person open to deadly infections. We're gonna talk about the numbers, AIDS in terms of the numbers. The infected individuals ages 13 and over, and this is for 2014. In the USA, there are one point, over 1 1.2 million individuals currently infected. I'm just pausing because you should be looking at your quiz right now. <laughs> in the USA, annual new infections, 50,000. Texas, currently infected, 69,000. And then Dallas currently infected over 3,000 individuals over 13 years old. And we obtained this from the CDC. How to prevent AIDS? Always use PPE. There's an antiretroviral medication that can be taken within three days of possible exposure. And it's called the PEP. And it may reduce your chances of becoming HIV positive. And then this was interesting to me that there are some people of European descent that are immune to HIV. I didn't know that. Now, the risk to FPO is minimal. And then we're going to go on to hepatitis. <coughs> hepatitis is an infectious liver disease, and it's caused by a virus. It can be the hepatitis A, B, C, E, or Delta factor. Hepatitis, some have no long-term effect and can be fatal some of the viruses. Possible symptoms, how would you know that you have been exposed to hepatitis? <coughs> Tired, loss of, loss of appetite, fever, diarrhea, dark urine, light colored stools, jaundice, which is the yellowing of the eyes and the skin, and stomach aches for hepatitis A and B. Not everyone has symptoms. Adults and teens will have symptoms more often than young children. <coughs> Treatments for hepatitis. New treatments have become available, check with your doctor, and then liver transplants. Over time, your liver might stop working, and you might need a new liver from a donor. HCV, which is the hepatitis C virus, is the number one reason for liver transplants in the USA. Hepatitis A, it's transmitted by contact with infected feces or contaminated water. There, are, there is no chronic or long-term damage and it's usually not fatal. 
how to prevent it, immunization, which I think that's the one that we have the option of getting, and then proper PPE. There are 125,000 to 200,000 hepatitis A infections in the USA every year. Ways to prevent uh, hepatitis A infection. Immunoglobulin, Ig. A preparation that contains hepatitis A antibodies can be used before exposure to HIV and within two weeks of HIV exposure to infection. And I, again, that's, I think the, the um, Ig is what we are allowed to get or we, we have the option of getting. It can be used for all age groups. Be sure to wash your hands after using the toilet or changing a diaper and before preparing or eating food. Always wear gloves if you have to clean surfaces contaminated with stool, for example, a diaper changing table. The risk to FBO is moderate. And we're gonna go into hepatitis B and C viruses. B and C is found in the blood and bodily fluids such as semen or vaginal fluids of an infected person. The average incubation period is about 16 weeks for um, hepatitis B and seven to nine weeks for hepatitis C. How can these uh, viruses be spread? Through infected drug use, in injection drug use. So sharing needles, syringes, or works, which is water cookers, cotton spoons when shooting drugs, so avoid drugs, illegal ones, sex with an infected person, avoid sharing items such as razors and toothbrushes that may have blood on them, tattoos and body piercings, if they're done with tools that might have someone else's blood on them, from an infected mother to her child at birth, and then of course not using proper PPE. Hepatitis B. It is transmitted through blood and bodily fluids. It is more infectious than HIV. There are chronic long-term effects. Death is probable. How to prevent it? Immunization again, and then proper PPE. There are 140 to 320,000 annual hepatitis B virus infections in the USA. The risk to FPO is minimal to moderate. And then we're gonna talk about hepatitis C. Hepatitis C is transmitted through blood and bodily fluids. It is mostly chronic. There are mostly chronic long-term effects. The cure is a drug cocktail and new treatments are available. Check with your doctor. There are 36,000 cases of hepatitis C that develop annually in the USA. Hepatitis C, the risk to the FPO staff is minimal. Why would you want to immunize? And this is uh, straight out of an OSHA excerpt, section standard 1910.1030, section F2, if you really need to verify. Hepatitis B vaccination shall be made available after the employee has received the training required. And this is to all employees who have occupational exposure. So that's the one that I was talking about. The FPO Safety Committee is concerned for your health and safety. And we have gone beyond what OSHA requires by adding the hepatitis A virus immunization as prevention for those who could be exposed to contaminated feces. And then for more information, you can go to the CDC website and we have it listed there. And then also BAM. Let's talk about tuberculosis, TB. Tuberculosis is transmitted only through the air from exposure to coughs, sneezes, or other tiny droplets coming from the lungs of an infected person. It can be treated very effectively through a combination of pills and the um, combination of pills, I think it's like seven pills that they give you every day, and the health agency has to come to your house or wherever you are and make sure you're taking these pills. Um, prevention, there's yearly testing and general awareness of those around. Symptoms, how do you know? You may have a bad cough that lasts three weeks or longer, pain in your chest, coughing up blood or sputum, weakness or fatigue, weight loss, no appetite, chills, fever, sweating at night. And then this just shows that all of these graphs are showing that tuberculosis, the occurrence has decreased throughout the years. And you can see that top graph is going down and we have out to 2013. And then the morbidity rate is also decreasing. You can see from the far left. TB cases, uh, the rates, you can see that Texas has a very high rate, greater than 3.2. 
molds. The presence of mold does not always mean a health problem. Molds produce mycotoxins, which are toxic to humans and can over time wear down the immune system to produce allergic or respiratory problems. And some of these may be severe. I think that you need to look at your tests. <laughs> Prevention. Keep moisture from remaining in buildings. Periodically do a visual inspection of the facilities. And mold abatement should be done as soon as possible upon discovery of mold. The flu, influenza. It is transmitted through the air from exposure to coughs, sneezes, or other tiny droplets coming from an infected person up to about six feet away. Less often, it is transmitted by touching a contaminated surface or object and then touching your own mouth or nose. And adults may be contagious a day before seeing symptoms and five to seven days after becoming sick. Children may be contagious more than seven days and your symptoms start one to four days after you're infected. That means that you may be able to pass on the flu to someone else before you even know that you're sick, as well as while you're sick. So if you're sick, stay home. Some people may be contagious without even uh, seeing, you may not even see symptoms. These are the symptoms of the flu. You may have a fever or feeling feverish chills, a cough, a sore throat, runny or stuffy nose, muscles or aching body aches, headaches, fatigue, very tired, vomiting, diarrhea, and that the vomiting and diarrhea is more often more common in children. And not everyone with the flu will have a fever. How do we prevent it? Get vaccinated, stay home if you're sick and stay away from sick people. Wash your hands often with soap and water. And if soap and water are not available, use the alcohol-based hand rubs. Clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces. And here's the, the activity level for the flu. And again, we can see that in Texas, it's real high. Uh, the risk to FPO is very high for catching the, the flu. <coughs> and lastly, we're going to talk about the common cold. Over 200 viruses can cause the common cold. The most common is the rhinovirus. Virus transmitted, the virus is transmitted, the common cold virus is transmitted by getting into the nose where it infects the membranes. If not properly treated, it can directly cause laryngitis, tracheitis, bronchitis, sinusitis, or pneumonia, pneumonitis. It is not fatal, but it severely affects your performance and your absenteeism. There are about 61 million cases of the common cold a year in the USA, and a person can have an average of four colds a year. I'm pausing so you can look at your... <laughs> Prevention. How do you prevent the common cold? By washing your hands properly, covering your mouth when coughing or sneezing, wiping your nose, using disposable tissues, healthy diet, sufficient sleep, and avoid rubbing your eyes and biting your nails. The risk to the FPO staff, uh, FPO staff is very high for the common cold. And so we are going to review biological agents. The definition is that they are living things or products of living things that can enter the body by inhalation, ingestion, or absorption through the skin. Oops. Infectious disease. Infectious agents are transmitted by direct physical contact or indirect transmission. And then biological hazards may be controlled at the source along the path by cleaning and waste disposal or at the worker by means of PPE or immunization programs. And then uh, on a final note, in 2004, OSHA revised, there, there's a Needle Stick Safety and Prevention Act that OSHA revised. Um, our, if you, I don't know why you would in our environment, but if you were to find a needle there is a box, a safety box outside of Paul's office, and I don't know if there are others on campus. There's one actually in the custodial area as well. And there's one in the custodial area. Just be sure to put them in there. Um, OSHA revised the act, and it says occupational exposure to BBP continue to be a serious problem, so Congress felt the need to modify the act. The act mandates that it, uh, additional requirements for maintaining a sharps injury log, so if you're injured, we need to get it documented. 
and for the employer to identify, evaluate, and implement safer, safer medical devices. So it is time for the quiz. Am I doing the quiz? Or are you? Okay. So let's do the quiz. Biological agents are living things or substances produced by living things that can cause illness or disease in humans. True or false? True. True. <coughs> Ingestion is the most common route of entry for a biohazard. False. List four of the eight biohazards that we discussed today. HIV, hepatitis, cold, flu, tomorrow. All sounds correct, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> there are only a million adults and children in the world who are infected by HIV AIDS. Oh. Correct. The Dallas Seminary FPO staff has the highest risk of contracting which of the following hepatitis viruses discussed today? A. 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 The flu is a biohazard that can be transmitted through which of the following means? Inhalation. Inhalation. Skin contact. Tuberculosis is a biohazard that can be transmitted through urine. False. Moles produce mycotoxins, which over time wear down the immune system of a human and produce allergic or respiratory problems. True. Correct. And how many colds will an average person that lives in the USA have in a year? Four. Correct, four. And the last one, what is the best way to prevent spreading an infection? Wash your hands. Excellent. Thank you so much.